Good afternoon and welcome everyone. We are happy you were able to join us for this webinar on STM32 plus Type-C port protection for safe, low-cost USB Type-C applications. During this one-hour webinar, you will learn how our STM32 and TCPP protection products make USB Type-C applications more robust and cost-effective. In addition to offering many benefits such as reversibility, higher data rates, and fast charging, USB Type-C connectors are being adopted to help meet environmental objectives through the reuse cables and adapters, thus reducing electronic waste while taking advantage of new use cases such as dual role data DRD or dual role power DRT. USB Type-C applications require careful power management design, safely comply with the latest USB-C power delivered 3.1 specification without compromising overall system costs. You will also discover how to design a cost-effective hardware application based on STM32 G0, the first MCU in the world to integrate a power delivery controller associated with a Type-C port protection, TCPP device designed in ST's IEEE Milestone Award winning bipolar CMOS, DMOS, BCD technology. My name is Adela, and I will be the moderator for today's event. There will also be a live Q&A session at the end of the webinar where ST experts will be available to answer your questions. Now, before we start, I would like to go to some housekeeping information. You can expand your slide deck or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the top right corner. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions that are running in the background. As webinars are bandwidth intensive, closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. This webcast is being streamed to your computer, so there is no dial-in number. And for the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear the speaker. As some networks cost slides to advance more slowly than others, turning off your VPN is recommended. And if your slides run behind, pushing a 5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. Additional answers to some common technical issues can be found under the help widget. And now, without further delay, I'll hand it over to our speaker. Hello, and welcome to STM32 plus TCPP protection for safe, low-cost USB Type-C applications webinar. My name is Mohamed Saadna. I am technical marketing for protection devices at ST Microelectronics, and I am based in Tours, France. And I am with Mathieu Rouvier from ST Microelectronics System Engineering and Application Engineering, also based in Tour France. In this webinar, you will learn about how STM32 MCUs and TCPP protections are making your USB-C application more robust and cost effective. Also, we will present hardware and software tools to help you kickstart your USB Type-C application. So let's have a look at the agenda for our webinar today. I will firstly present why STM32 plus TCPP is a perfect combo for USB-C applications in terms of cost. Then we will review the protection requirements for USB-C that are re either required by the USB-C specification or by the regulations or by experience. Mathieu will then introduce the different use cases that can be implemented and the corresponding hardware and software tools we have developed for you. We will end this webinar by a summary of online resources and examples so that you can easily start implementing your USB Type-C application. Let us start with the first part of our webinar related to the USB Type-C system partitioning. When designing an embedded application featuring USB Type-C connector, you would need basically a microcontroller as a core component to manage the digital and analog interfaces. Also, you will need an external USB Type-C controller to execute both the USB-C protocol and the associated high voltage controls. These high voltage controls are used to manage the load switch on the VBUS or VCON power path. And finally, there are the required protections such as over voltage, over current, or ESD protection. But that was before 2019. Since then, ST Microelectronics has introduced the STM32 G0, the first MCU integrating the USB C and power delivery protocol, among other features. 
This means that you don't need anymore an external USB Type-C controller. And to make the system partitioning complete, ST has developed a new family of protection devices, the Type-C port protection or TCPP. The TCPP integrates the high voltage controls and the protections in the same silicon die using a high voltage technology called BCD technology. In the end, this system partitioning requires only two chips and this is why STM32 plus TCPP enables cost-effective USB Type-C solutions. At ST Microelectronics, we have defined three TCPP products, each one corresponding to a major use case of the USB-C specification, sync, source, and dual role power. Each of these TCPP provides a required protection feature set depending on the use case to allow a precise cost control of your USB-C implementation. Let's start on the right with the TCPP 01 M12 dedicated to sync applications. This is typically the protection for USB charging devices. TCPP 01 M12 is in mass production and widely available from ST Microelectronics official distributors worldwide. On the left, we have the TCPP 02 M18 dedicated for source applications, such as power adapters or USB hubs. It contains more features and high voltage controls as defined in the USB-C power delivery. Finally, in the middle, the TCPP03 M20 is tailored for high voltage controls and protections of dual role power applications that use STM32 with built-in USB-C controller, such as STM32 G0, G4, L5 or U5. Dual role means that the application uses the same USB-C connector to act as a sink or as a source, depending on the application that connects to it. Let's take the example of a power bank that would feature a unique USB-C connector that is DRP enabled, here represented in the middle in blue. When nothing is connected to it, and the system is active, the USB-C connector is acting uh, as a DRP and is toggling between sync and source state. When the power bank is connected to a wall adapter to charge the battery, the USB-C connector of the power bank is then acting as a sync. Now, let's unplug the wall adapter and charge a smart speaker from the power bank. Now the power bank is charging the smart speaker, so acting as a source. So here we have the all three TCPPs that are compliant with the latest USB-C power delivery specification 3.1 for standard, standard power range and they are able to manage up to 100 watt contract negotiation. They are also compliant with the voltage levels of the programmable power supply feature to enable fast charging. TCPP02 and TCPP03 will be available from ST distributors in September. And now Mathieu will present us the development tools. Thanks Mohamed for this product introduction. Let me complete it with development tools on the STM32 ecosystem. Each STM32 family has Nucleo64 boards. These highly affordable STM32 Nucleo boards allow anyone to try out new ideas and to quickly create prototypes with any STM32 MCU. On the left, you can see a Nucleo board with a white steel screen. On top of Nucleo board, X nucleo boards can be plugged to extend the application hardware. Based on this principle, three X nucleo boards can be plugged on top of any nucleo ID Type-C connector and also green screw connector for power pass. One to sync power and device data with TCPP01 M12, one to source power and host data with TCPP02 M18, one for dual role power and dual role data with TCPP03 
and pointing. Each board can be used according to the Type C configuration. X nucleo SNK1 M1 and X nucleo SRC1 M1 can be used with any nucleo 64 boards for 5 volts up to 3 amps. Nucleo with UCPD peripheral on STM32 allow power delivery feature up to 20 volts, 5 amps, and programmable power supply PPS. Please note that power delivery is mandatory for dual role power. Software is available on Xcube TCPP package and also on GitHub. Now, let's start the story from the beginning, the connector itself. We all observed that the USB Type-C connector is gradually replacing all the legacy USB connectors. Indeed, USB Type-C connector is slim and slick tailored, and it is reversible plug orientation and cable direction. It's a convergence on a single connector. As example, power or data roll was previously defined by mechanic. Type A for source, type B for sync. The design USB Type-C connector is much more complex because we are moving from legacy connector to 24 pin connector. It's simplifying the user experience, but it's a challenge for the engineer. Previously, the power bus, also named the bus, was always 5 volt on TPA connectors. On TPC connector, it's 0 volt before connection, and it can rise up to 20 volt with USB power delivery protocol. Let's see how cable detection and orientation works in the USB TPC. This electrical block diagram represents source to sync connection with a Type-C cable. On the cable, four lines are used in this process. The power bus, the bus, the configuration channel, CC lines, array indicates to the source to turn on vacuum voltage, effective cable, and ground. By default, the bus is not powered. It's a cold plug. At connection, the configuration channel is used to solve plug orientation using CC1 or CC2 lines of the connector. It's highlighted in yellow. Source is identified by pull-up resistor and voltage source on its CC pins. Sync is identified by pull-down resistor on CC pins. To rephrase, a CC line voltage change due to pull-down resistor connection to pull-up resistor indicate a source to sync connection. The bus is then turned on at 5V as well as VCON when array is connected to the other CC pin. Source also indicates its 5V current capability. Legacy 0.5 amps with 56 kilo ohm resistor, 1.5 amps with 22 kilo ohm resistor, and 3 amps with 10 Kilo ohm resistors. Then, voltage on 5.1 kilo ohm pull down resistor of sync CC lines gives the current source capability at 5 volt to the sync. When the cable is removed from the receptacle, the source must activate a discharge pass for the VBUS and on VECON in order to ensure a code plug. We just seen how attach, detach, orientation, sync, and source detection is done, but only at 5 volt up to 3 amp. That limits the power to 15 watts. Thanks to the USB power delivery protocol, with a numerical communication on DC line, it is possible to increase power up to 100 watts with a negotiation between sync and source. Before showing the capabilities of the USB-C power delivery, let's place on the source power rating graphics the 5 volt red line with 
USB 2, 2.5 watts, USB 3, 4.5 watts. For adapter, this power can be increased to 7.5 watts by shorting data lines. It's USB BC or battery charging 1.2. On USB C only, 1.5 amps and 3 amps source capability indicated by pull down resistors are also reported in gray on the 5 volt red line. USB power delivery allows voltage increase with four fixed power data objects, PDOs, 5 volt, 9 volt, 15 volt, and 20 volts. For current lower than 3 amps, standard cable can be used. While an electronically marked cable is mandatory between 3 and 5 amps. I let Mohamed present you protection and system requirement for USB C. Thank you, Mathieu. So now let's review USB Type C protection requirements. Here are the three main hazards that can damage your USB C device. First, an ESD event that can destroy integrated circuits. Second, a defective adapter that can provide a DC voltage higher than the one negotiated with the sink. Or a defective load that can sink a higher current than expected. And finally, a short circuit can happen between VBUS and adjacent pins. First, let's review the electrostatic discharge, also known as ESD. The, meta the metallic pins of the USB-C connector are an entry path to ESD, and this can cause reliab reliability issues or even destroy ICs in your system. This picture on the right shows one of the potential consequences of an ESD event called a melting flash. The most reliable way to protect against ESD is to implement an ESD protection rated for IEC 61000 Dash 4 dash 2 standard. Our free TCPPs are compliant with this IEC 61000 4 2 standard, integrating ESD protections up to plus or minus 8 kV contact discharge, which complies with the highest level of protection, the level 4 of the standard IEC 61000 4 2. Second danger is defective source. Let's take an example of defective charger. If this charger has been used at 20 volts and now due to software or defective hardware, VBUS is now stuck at 20 volts. When you connect this defective charger to a sink, even if the sink requests 5 volts, the charger will deliver 20 volts without negotiation with the sink. It will damage the power management circuit of the sink application. Many examples of this issue are available online, especially due to poor quality cables or adapters. This highlights the requirement for protecting USB-C applications. On the right, for instance, there is a story where the security researchers were able to infect a variety of fast chargers with malicious code to deliver more voltage than the connected device could handle. This caused the components inside the affected electronics to spark and finally melt. A protection is also required against defective sync. Indeed, an overcurrent protection is required for any source application. For example, if a short circuit happens on a power syncing device, this will generate an overcurrent on VBUS. And this is clearly specified in the USB Type-C specification uh, saying that a source shall protect itself from a sink that draws current in excess. Finally, an over-voltage protection is required on CC lines to protect against a short to VBUS event. This may occur when a user plugs or unplugs the USB-C cable. For instance, as shown on this picture, VBUS could get shorted to those adjacent pins such as CC or SBU pins. And even though the USB-C cable is more reliable than the previous micro USB connector, 
it can still be twisted, which might generate a short circuit, especially if it is a low quality cable or connector. On top of protection features, you have to consider specific features of the USB Type-C specification. First one is a controlled rise time on the load switch. For this, you will need a gate driver for N-channel MOSFETs. N-channel MOSFETs are usually preferred over PMOS thanks to their lower JSON and they are also cheaper and smaller, but they require a charge pump for their control. Also, the USB-C is a cold socket, meaning that VBUS and VCON must be discharged when the USB-C connection is lost. The VCON pin being the CC pin that is not used for communication, you must integrate a switch matrix for this purpose. And finally, the power programmable power supply requires current monitoring, so an analog current sense must be implemented. All these features are making the development of USB-C applications quite complex. However, the STM32 plus TCPP approach is simplifying the USB-C implementation because the STM32 with built-in UCPD takes care of the USB-C protocol and the software of your application. And on the other hand, the TCPP integrates all these required high voltage features and protections. On top of STM32 G0, UCPD is now proliferating into other STM32 series such as STM32J4, STM32L5, and now STM32U5. So you can select your USB Type-C power delivery MCU within a list of 332 part numbers, depending on the required peripherals of your application. Here is a table summarizing the TCPP product features according to their use case. For a sync application, the features and protections are plus or minus 8 kV contact discharge ESD protection on CC lines, as well as OVP on CC lines. On VBUS, a gate driver with charge pump for N channel MOSFET is integrated to enable the over voltage protection. When a protection is triggered on the TCPP1, an open drain flag is activated. For source applications, the TCPP02 reuses TCPP01 features and adds an overcurrent protection as well as an analog current sense and discharge path for VBUS and VCON. The communication with the MCU is done via an I2C interface. Please note that a source shall not present dead batteries resistors. Then, for dual role power applications, the TCPP03 M20 uses features that are common to both source and sync. Now, Mathieu will present you the hardware tools associated with these three use cases. In this section, I will present you application cases with associated development tools. The first development tool is for SYNC with XNucleo SNK1M1 plugged on top of Nucleo 64 board. It can offer USB-C power delivery SYNC up to 100 watts and it has been certified by USB IF. With an STM32 with UCPD peripheral on Nucleo 64 board, it is possible to reload USB PD sync up to 20 volt, 5 amps, and programmable power supply. USB data 2.0 are also supported. All protection features are realized on the X Nucleo SNK1 M1 on all use line of the USB C connector. VBUS surges and overvoltage protection, CC lines ESD and overvoltage protection, D plus and D minus data lines ESD and EMI filtering, TCPP01M12 
also embed an over temperature protection. Dead batteries are managed to start when battery is empty and the power consumption is optimized according to the use case. There is no consumption when unattached. With an STM32 without UCPD peripheral or Nucleo 64 board, it is possible to realize USB sync up to 5V 3 amp. USB data 2.0 are also supported. Like previously, all protection and specific features are realized on X Nucleo and SENCAM1 M1 on all use lines of the USB C connector. To change X Nucleo SNK1 M1 configuration from 5V only to power delivery, only two jumper positions must be changed. To supply the whole system by VBUS coming from the Type-C connector, only two jumper twelve. The OVP trigger voltage can be adjusted with a solder bridge table according to the consumer pass absolute max rating connecting the green screw connector. The second development tool is for source, with X Nucleo SRC1 M1 plugged on top of Nucleo 64 board. It can offer USB-C power delivery source up to 100 watt, and it will be available on Q4 2021. With an STM32 that embeds UCPD peripheral on Nucleo 64 boards, it is possible to realize a USB PD source up to 20 volt, 5 amps, and programmable power supply. USB data 2.0 are also supported. All protection features are realized on the X Nucleo SRC1 M1 on all use lines of the USB-C connector, VBUS surges and overcurrent protection, CC lines, ESD, overvoltage and overcurrent protection, D plus and D minus data lines, ESD and EMI filtering. DCPP02M18 also embeds over temperature protection. Specific high voltage features for VBUS are NMOS gate driver for load switch, discharge pass, and analog current sense. VCON switch matrix and discharge pass are also available. The power consumption is optimized according to the use case with less than 11 microamps when unattached. With an STM32 without UCPD peripheral on Nucleo 64 boards, it is possible to realize USB source up to 5V 3 amps. USB data 2.0 are also supported. Like previously, all protections and specific features are realized on X Nucleo SRC1 M1 on all those lines of the USB C connector. To change X Nucleo SRC1 M1 configuration from 5V only to power delivery, only two jumper positions must be changed. To supply the whole system by source connecting to green screw connector, only two jumpers to add. The 5V current source capability can be adjusted with a solar bridge table. The last development tools is for USB dual roll power with X Nucleo DRP1 M1 plugged on top of Nucleo 64 board. It can offer USB C power delivery DRP up to 100 watt. Certification has been submitted to USB IF. A STM32 that embeds UCPD peripheral on Nucleo 64 board is required to manage power delivery. The solution offers USB PD DRP up to 20 volts, 5 amps, and programmable power supply. USB data 2.0 are also supported. 
all protections and specific features presented on X-Nucleo SNK1M1 and X-Nucleo SRC1M1 are present on X-Nucleo DRP1M1. Indeed, there is a toggling between sync and source when the DRP is used. To supply the whole system by VBUS coming from the Type-C connector or by source voltage coming from the green screw connector, only two jumpers need to be added. The OVP trigger voltage can be adjusted with the solar bridge table according to the consumer pass absolute maximum rating connected to the green screw connector. These three X nucleo boards are a part of STM32 USB-C development ecosystem. They can be plugged on top of any Nucleo 64 boards for 5 volt sync and source. If power delivery is required for higher voltage, PPS or TRP, then UCPD peripheral is required on the STM32 of the Nucleo 64 board. STM32 G071B disco board is a complete USB-C sniffer. It is intended for discovery and display of USB-C port characteristics such as data roll, power roll, VBUS voltage, and current monitoring. STM32 Cubamix and also STM32 QBDO are free integrated development environment for STM32. They can be used for STM32 configuration and programming. To finish, STM32 QMonitor UCPD is a software tool to configure and monitor the USB Type-C power delivery ports on equipped STM32 boards. The configuring parts allows the modification of the USB Type-C power delivery port default configuration. Check of power delivery contract establishment and activity are possible with the monitoring tool. Thank you, Mathieu. We have summarized in this slide all the resources and tools to help you kickstart your USB Type-C application with STM32 and TCPP. You may start with video tutorials on YouTube and then look for advanced information in our application notes or web pages. To easily start your project, I invite you to check the X Nucleo SNK1 M1 page and download the associated software on Xcube TCPP web page. At any time in your project development, we can support you on the ST Community Forum. In conclusion, taking advantage of STM32 and TCPP offers cost-efficient systems with optimized power consumption, a wide offer of STM32 MCUs expanding with more UCPD-based STM32 in the future, and a safe and easy way to add innovative USB Type-C and power delivery features thanks to TCPP Nucleo expansion boards within STM32 development ecosystems. Thank you. All right, after this great presentation, we are now ready for our Q&A session. So let's begin with the first question for today. And our first question is, do I need TCPP 01 M12 if I use USB Type-C at 5 volts only? Mathieu Rouvier speaking. Uh, I am an application engineer on protection. Uh, thank you for, for this question. Yes, because even if, if you are at 5 only, you can be faced to a defective adapter, as presented by Mohamed in, a, in the presentation. And uh, if you 
defected adapter present higher voltage and your absolute maximum rating of your power line, you will have a, a defective system. So for sure, uh, you need a, a PPO1 on your sync path, even if it's self 5 volt. Thank you. Thank you, Mathieu. Let's move on to our next question, which says, what is the best PCB placement for TCPP? OK, I will also answer. Uh, as TCPP embeds ESD protection for CC lines, it needs to be placed as close as possible from the connector in order to remove uh, as quickly as possible the, the surge from the uh, from the PCB out from the PCB. So the best placement is close to the connector uh, Type C connector. Thank you. Thank you, Mathieu. Let's move on to our next question, which is coming from France. And France is asking us, how can the provided source current be limited? Is this possible with TCPP 03M20? If yes, could the source current limit be different than the sync one? Great question. Uh, the current is sent with a shunt resistor, and this is the same for uh, sync and source. As a consequence, uh, of your current protection level is um, the same for uh, both cases. If you have two le levels, uh, we recommend to use a shunt resistance for the highest one. And for the uh, lowest one, I recommend to use a, a software comparator on STM32 connected to TCPP 03 M20 analog output current. And of course, a dedicated uh, software interrupt to turn on the, the path. The power pass. Turn off the power pass. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mathieu. Let's move on to our next question from Arturo. And Arturo is asking us which STM32 G0 MCU is ready for UCPD? Is it difficult for me to sort them by this feature on product selection? Okay, I will take this one. I am uh, Mohamed Sadna, uh, product marketing for uh, protection devices. So on the uh, product selector, STM32 G0 MCUs that are ready for uh, UCPD are mainly STM32 G071, STM32 G0 B1, but we can also use STM32 Cube MX to check this, uh, this feature. And, uh, and finally, also in the smartphone application on the Android version, on the product finder, the UCPD feature is uh, listed in the parametric search. Thank you for, uh, for this question. You can move to the next one. Thank you, Mohamed. Let's move on to our next question, which is coming from Theo. And Theo is asking us, what if I need to use a Type-C connector without using power delivery, only using data lines? Do I still need to add protection circuits described today? Could I get away with just leaving all pins unconnected and just connecting the data lines as a micro B connector? Uh, this is a, a similar answer than I've done previously. Uh, even if you are uh, close to uh, le you are on legacy cases, that means five volts only, you can be faced to a defective adapter. So uh, based on that, you need to protect your power pass uh, if your power pass is not able to sustain a voltage up to 22 volts. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which is coming from Maximilian, and he's asking us, is there an advantage of USB-C PD over traditional USB for 5 volt 1.6A applications? Uh, frankly speaking, I don't think so. I think uh, one point, uh, te technically, there is no direct advantages because uh, you are uh, you have the same power capability. But of course, if you develop your uh, your application with power delivery, you will be able to move easier to to uh, to higher voltage and higher power rates. But uh, technically, at the beginning, there is no 
we run on this is term of uh, features of your system. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which is coming from Peter. And Peter is asking us, on every slide I see USB 2.0, is USB 3.0 not possible? Uh, you're right. Uh, you, usually, we are, we are, uh, we are component chip of STM32, and uh, uh, today STM32 do not embed USB 3.0, so we don't focus on that. For sync, this is a, there is no limitation, but for a source and TRP, as a USB 3.0 required a higher VCAN current, our switches are embedded in TCP, P, O2, and O3 are a bit uh, too small. So we, I think maybe that's something on the roadmap. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question. And our next question says, can I use other protection than TCPP for my USB Type-C using STM32? Why not? <laughs> for sure, why not? But uh, keep in mind that uh, this product has been uh, developed in order to ensure the highest uh, quality in terms of protection and also optimize the bomb content of your uh, system. So you can use something else. Huh? You, know, you have competitors on, on the place, of course, but this solution has been optimized. So you can do that, but uh, I think there is no gain to do that. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which is coming from Stefan. And Stefan is asking us, can TCPP 01 M12 take care of inrush current limiting for VBUS? Uh, oh, great question. Unfortunately, TCPP 01 does not take care uh, of inrush current uh, on, uh, limiting for VBUS uh, because it's not required by the standard. And we, as explained previously, we've uh, uh, tailor the, the product in order to fit to the best requirement, but uh, no more. If you want to do that, and with that, some development on that way, you can use the TCPP03 and 20 and uh, uh, on a sync only mode, and there you will have uh, overcurrent protection and also current sensing, allowing you to, to perform a nice uh, application. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question from James. And James is asking us, do we need a TCPP chip to design a basic 5-volt USB OTG application with Type-C connectors? OK, I can uh, take uh, this one, uh, Mohamed. So of course, yes, uh, it depends on the uh, absolute maximum rating of uh, the uh, input pin of your po power management where the uh, uh, VBUS uh, will connect to. Uh, is, if this uh, power management uh, uh, pin uh, uh, absolute max rating is, is higher than uh, 20 volts, uh, you may not need an over voltage protection on, on this line. But if this uh, absolute max rating is uh, below uh, 20 volts, then you will need an over voltage protection that is integrated in the TCPP01. And uh, also, you will need to take care of the ESD protection of the CC lines that is also integrated in the uh, TCPP01. So if your AMR of the power management is uh, higher than 20 volts, then you, you uh, don't need an OVP on the bus and you can add external ESD protection on the CC lines. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Mohamed. Let's move on to our next question from Jens. And Jens is asking us, can I also use the CCPP with your L4 MCUs? Okay, Mathieu speaking. Uh, yes, you can use them with your L4 MCUs, adding a Type-C connector to your system. But uh, keep in mind that L4 does not have uh, UCPD peripheral embedded. Never mind, you can use it only on, at 5 volts 
on legacy cases for sync and source. Thank you. Thank you, Mathieu. Let's move on to our next question from Stefan. And Stefan is asking us, is overvoltage protection required by the USB standard or just good design? Mm, it's not required by the USB standard, but just, just for good design or a light design that depends. But uh, overcurrent protection is required by the standard. But over voltage protection is not required yet. But uh, keep in mind that as soon as uh, the mechanical uh, drawing of the connector has been done and tested on first uh, interconnection events, this weakness has been uh, identified and uh, has been treated. And for sure, it's uh, it's something um, quite inherent of the mechanical drawing and the type C overall uh, system. But it's not writing down on the paper. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question. Now next question says, why need several STM32 for a multi-port USB-C power delivery application? OK, uh, Mohamed, uh, I, I can take uh, this one. So uh, on STM32 G0 uh, UCPD version, uh, there, there are, uh, in some versions there are two UCPD uh, controllers that are able to uh, manage uh, dual port solution. It means that uh, with one STM32 G0 having two UCPD, you have uh, control for, uh, for two ports. And on each of these ports, you will need to place uh, one TCPP device. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed. Let's move on to our next question. And our next question says, when do I need one or two MOSFETs for my load switch on VBUS? OK. Matthew speaking, it's, um, it's based on your, the voltage presence on uh, both parts of your uh, system. Let me rephrase. Uh, as example, on a provider path, that means when you are on source, uh, on a DRP connector, you can have voltage on the bus of the type P connector. So you need a MOSFET on one way to block it. And you can also have voltage on the power source of your power path. So you need two MOSFETs because due to the body diode of your MOSFET, uh, you have a, a leakage from one to another one. So you, using two MOSFETs front to front, you are blocking that. On thin case, on thin case only, you only need to block the voltage coming from the Type C connector in case of over voltage. Then only a single MOSFET can be used. But if you have uh, a voltage on both parts of your sync path, you can use a dual MOSFET. So that is more uh, application relative. So the solution proposed uh, are the most common ones, but if you have a specific, uh, specific one, uh, don't care. Adapt your, uh, your layout and your, uh, your design to, the, to your application. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which says, can we use STM32 plus CCPP with USB 2.0 cable application? Um, yes. OK, uh, Mathieu, Mathieu speaking. Uh, to rephrase, I think USB 2 cable application is type A to two type B connector. Uh, TCPP are not dedicated to this kind of application. Uh, as example, you don't you don't have any uh, over voltage risk because it's five volt only. Uh, you don't need to sense uh, CC lines. So no, TCPP is only designed for type C application and not previous ones. 
Thank you, Matteo. Let's move on to our next question from Johan. And Johan is asking us, do you have any solutions to take the USB-C power supply against lightning from the DO-160? Okay, Matteo speaking, I don't know DO-160, but uh, on the reference design proposed around the three TCPPs, uh, we all embeds on the PCB, a dedicated TVS, ESDA uh, 25P35 uh, 1U1M. This is a small, very small TVS that uh, removes uh, surges coming from the from the webus. It is mandatory as you can have uh, some uh, surges on your on your system and coming from uh, your adapter. But of course, if you have uh, higher current uh, surges, you will need to uh, adapt uh, your TVS. This TVS is not embedded on the TCPP because uh, it's a uh, uh, power device. And of course, power device must be uh, fitted according to the uh, system requirement. And we cannot use a generic part. And we prefer let to let you the possibility to adjust your TVS to your system and your equipment. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question, which states: Can DRP support sync and source concurrently? So, Mohamed uh, speaking. So, uh, DRP dual role power is uh, a mode where the connector will. Uh, be, will be acting either as a source or a, a sink, but it cannot act uh, in the same time uh, to the both roles. So uh, the, the role of the connector will, uh, will be uh, defined according to the, the role of the, of the device that uh, connects to this, uh, to, to this port uh, as per the um, uh, negotiation and uh, and pull up pull down uh, position on the on the CC lines. Thank you. Yeah, just one comment. Uh, TCPP 3 we we can uh, be used on a DRP port. Uh, cannot close consumer and provider pass together. This is a hardware locked in order to avoid any uh, bad issue. Why uh, debugging the software? <laughs> so for sure, it's not possible to 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 close that uh, two pass together. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed and Matthew. Let's move on to our next question, which states: Why does TCPP do not integrate ESD protection for high-speed data lines? Yes. Yeah, so um, as uh, as as we have explained during the, the presentation, we have defined TCPP to be the most cost effective for USB-C application, and as not all applications require uh, USB high-speed data lines, uh, we prefer to keep this uh, function for ESD protection of high-speed data lines externally, but can be added on top of the of the minimum features that are required for the USB-C standard that are integrated in the TCPP. Thank you. But just one comment. We have uh, easy protection and EMI filter for USB 3 uh, uh, high-speed lines. Correct. On our portfolio. Thank you. Thank you, Mathieu. Thank you for your answer. Let's move on to our next question, which says, can I use TCPP protection devices with another MCU than STM32? Uh, Mohamed, so uh, yes, definitely you can use the TCPP device uh, with uh, other MCU. So if this MCU embeds a USB-C controller, so you, you will be able to uh, to, to run the USB-C protocol, else you can still use TCPP with another MCU at uh, 5 volt only from uh, 0.5 amp up to uh, 3 amp. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Let's take another question, and another question is coming from Jan, and he's asking us, uh, which solution do you prefer for external programmable power supply, example, with ex-nucleo SRC1M1 board? Do you provide C source code for voltage control? Uh, of course, as uh, to perform uh, a source, you need to use a nucleo X nucleus for SRC one M one board. Uh, this board are functional, of course, uh, but not really yet released to the market. It's planned on uh, Q4, and when they will be released, like all the boards, the source code, the C source code, will be also released on a GitHub and on the uh, X cube TCPP package. So yes, we will provide the type C, uh, the C course. Oh, Scott, sorry for the, for the typo. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question from Martin. And he's asking us, what is the most effective OVP up to 24 volts? So, uh, uh, as we have explained, uh, for a USB-C, uh, you need uh, OVP on, on VBUS and also ESD protection on, on the CC line. So definitely the, the most cost-effective uh, OVP up uh, to 24 volt uh, would be uh, TCPP01. Uh, and the advantage of TCPP01 is that it integrates the charge pump uh, in the gate driver so that uh, TCPP01 is able to drive N MOSFET which are uh, obviously most cost effective compared to P MOSFET. And, uh, and uh, as, a use, as a designer, you don't have to add external circuitry to drive the, this external N MOSFET. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is coming from Brendan, and he's asking us how is protection of the data lines done? Okay, Mathieu speaking. Uh... Uh, on the system partitioning, if you want to use uh, data lines, you have two, two solutions. You can just add uh, ESD, classical ESD protection. Uh, we have product for that, uh, as example, USB at 6 to uh, 6 6 and this is uh, what we are recommended uh, today. And if you want also to, to protect, uh, protect against uh, EMI, uh, on both uh, bonds uh, duration and uh, sensitivity and also uh, aggression, you can use a, a ECMF, that's a, a product that embeds a, a common bond filter, and also uh, ESD protection. Uh, as example, uh, ESM, ECMF 022HMS MX6. This is what we are. You can find all the, uh, this uh, recommended products on the reference design of the X nuclear boards. But of course, yes, you need to, to protect uh, the data lines of USB uh, 2.0. Thank you. Let's move on to our next question. And our next question says, CCPP01 M12 integrates 8 kilovolt ESD protection on VBUS. Why is there an external ESD diode on VBUS line in reference schematic? Okay. Uh, on power buses, uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, ESD is no more the issue. The issue is the surge. And uh, to filter the surge, uh, ESD are not enough. You need a TVS, transient voltage separator, with higher IPP capability, current capability. And then that's why we are using TVS. Uh, on top of the basic EZ protection. It's mandatory when you have power bus. Of course, you size your TVS according to your, according to the robustness required by your system. But what we are proposing into the reference design is a tiny, small TVS uh, allowing uh, well fitted to this kind of uh, uh, mobile application. Thank you. 
Thank you. So I see we are nearing the top of the hour and we will be running out of time. So let's take one more question for today. And one, our last question is coming from Jean-Philippe who's asking us what, what are the packages available for TCPP products? Mohamed speaking. So uh, all the TCPP uh, products comes in a QFN uh, package using 0.5 millimeter pitch to allow uh, easy uh, integration uh, in, uh, in in low-cost PCB. Uh, so TCPP01 uh, for SYNC has uh, 12 uh, leads in, in QFN. TCPP02 for source has uh, 18 leads. And TCPP03 for DRP has uh, 20 leads. Thank you. Thank you, and this last question brings us to the end of this webinar. Thank you again for attending. Also, if you and or one of your friends are interested or considering pursuing a career at ST Microelectronics, we are hiring at this moment, and to view our current job openings, please click on the call to action button at the bottom of your screen. For those of you that have questions that come up later, we encourage you to use our online support tool. A direct link to our support tool is already available at the bottom of your screen. Of course, you can also contact your sales representative. Again, we will be sending all registrants to this webinar a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar, as well as additional resources and the link to the community where you can find the answer to some of your questions. A PDF of the presentation of this webinar is already available under the resource widget at the bottom of your screen. So thank you again for attending our webinar on STM32 plus TCPP protection for safe, low-cost USB Type-C applications. We hope you enjoyed it and were able to take away some useful information. And also, a thank you to those of you who took the time to answer our survey. We do appreciate your feedback, as it will help us improve your webinar experience with us. And of course, a big thank you to our speakers for making this webinar possible. Please stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you soon at one of our future events.